Hello, and welcome to the Road Coach Podcast, the show where I share what I've learned through years of living on the road from research and experimentation, so that if you're like me and you spend a lot of time away from home, you can not only survive, but thrive, even when you are out of your element. If you're listening to this show on your favorite podcasting app, thank you very much. Please leave us a review or a rating on whatever uh, platform you listen to. Share us with your friends and family if you like what you hear. As always, I recommend you check out the YouTube page, youtube.com slash at the road coach podcast, where you can see everything that I'm putting up on the screen as I go along and you can follow along with me. If you'd like to support the show, please visit patreon.com slash the road coach podcast, where you can become a contributing member and help me to continue to make these episodes should you find them valuable. Today's episode, <clears throat> I wanted to do a bit of an update, uh, update episode on some things that I've talked about uh, in previous episodes, how they're working for me, what uh, is working, what isn't working, and what I've decided to continue using or change using in my road regimen. Uh, so the first one that I wanted to talk about is Tongat Ali or Long Jack. So we talked about this in the episode on increasing your testosterone levels. As we all know, as men get older, our testosterone levels tend to drop significantly year over year. Uh, and there are a couple of ways that you can increase them. Obviously, um, proper sleep and exercise are important for hormonal balance. Of course, um, many men, as they get older, explore testosterone replacement therapy as an option. Uh, and we did a whole episode on different ways that you can improve your testosterone. Uh, one of which being Tongkat Ali or the Long Jack herb tends to be the most widely researched and positively impacting on testosterone levels sort of natural supplement. So I started taking this probably about two months ago, I want to say, uh, and I take it daily just in a capsule form. Uh, the one that I take is a 500 milligrams per day extract of Long Jack. The, a lot of the research that's out there, if we go back to the studies that we reviewed in improving your natural testosterone levels, the sort of sweet spot, excuse me, sweet spot for uh, supplementation was about 400 milligrams per day of Tonkat Ali. So the supplement I found is about 500 milligrams per day. I just found it at Spartan Nutrition, local health food store. Sometimes these supplements are harder to find and sometimes they are harder to find in their pure form. They might be mixed with other things. Uh, we went through some of the other herbal options about inc improving your testosterone levels, and there's not a lot of data behind most of them, uh, most of the other herbs. And so if you find a supplement that's mixed with Long Jack and three or four different other herbs that are supposedly going to do the job, it'll probably mean that the Long Jack concentration is lower, around 100 or 200 milligrams per dose in those supplements. and Again, if you want to follow the data, the data is you need about 400 milligrams a day if it's going to do the job that uh, the studies reported. So I just take a pure 500 milligram per day. It is a little bit more expensive. I believe it works out to about $1.25 a day, something like that. Um, and since I started taking it, what have I noticed? For me, sleep has been the dramatic difference between before I took the supplement and after I started to take the supplement. So I was always a pretty good sleeper uh, and I needed between eight and nine hours of sleep on average, uh, especially when training pretty hard uh, and to recover and feel like I was completely rested. Um, I also take for those of you who have listened to a lot of these episodes, I take magnesium every night before bed as well. And I think a magnesium supplement one, we are all very low in magnesium uh, in our diets in the Western world. Um, so you should be supplementing with it, period. But magnesium is really, really good for sleep. And it also is important for your vitamin D absorption as well. So especially Canadians like me in the wintertime, if you're taking a vitamin D supplement because you don't have a lot of sunlight. It's not being absorbed properly if you don't have enough magnesium. Um, and then of course, magnesium really, really helps with your sleep. So I take 500 milligrams of magnesium oxide at bedtime. Uh, there are better formulations of magnesium for uh, digestibility and absorbability than the oxide formulation, but oxide is super cheap. So you can just take a lot more of it um, 
at a lot higher dosage, um, it'll cost you less and you will get the same effect. So I had been, I've been supplementing with magnesium for years and I sleep pretty well. What I noticed though, after about a week and a half or so to two weeks of daily Tonkat Ali supplementation, and I don't take this at night, I take it in the morning with the rest of my multivitamins and supplements um, with, uh, with a glass of water sort of first thing when I wake up. But my sleep quality has improved significantly. I have deeper, uh, better sleeps. I do not wake up at all in the middle of the night unless, of course, there's you know, loud noises or my daughter kicks me in the head. Uh, but I also need significantly less sleep. So since about the two week mark of taking this supplement, I only need between six and seven hours of sleep. I fall asleep immediately and I wake up alert and refreshed six to seven hours later with no mental fog. It feels like I've had an amazing sleep and I don't need to catch up on that sleep. Whereas before I started taking this supplement, if I had six hours of sleep, I either needed a nap or I needed extra sleep the next night because I would eventually burn out. And since taking this, I'm good. Seven hours of sleep is more than enough now. And I wake up on my own since for the, for the last, let's say month and a half uh, or two months that, um, that I've been taking this consistently. So I am really, really impressed with what this supplement has done for my overall routine. Uh, I highly recommend you checking it out if you can find this. There's lots of supplements online. Um, again, just make sure that if you want to follow the data and you want to get similar benefits, um, the studies all say that at least 400 milligrams per day is what you want to take. Remember, it is an herbal supplement. Uh, I we, It's hard to say if this is doing anything for me other than, you know, the experience I've had with my sleep. But <clears throat> I, as in, I haven't gotten any blood tests, so I don't know if my testosterone levels have improved. Um, you know, on a blood serum level at all. Uh, but taking this supplement is definitely something I'm going to continue to do because I've seen dramatic benefits uh, from taking it. Next up, quitting smoking. I did a couple episodes on quitting smoking. One, on why you should quit, and two, uh, on how to quit. And uh, I did this, you know, I think that everyone can use a little bit more information on this subject. Um, smoking is still a very prominent part of a lot of people's lives. And it's one of the worst things, you know, smoking cigarettes and drinking alcohol are pretty much the two worst things you can do for overall health, longevity, and performance. And if you travel a lot, like we do, um, fans of this show are typically ones that are on the road a lot of the time for work. Um, it saps our energy levels and prevents us from, from completing our goals for a lot of reasons. So... Part of the reason was for share. Part of the reason for doing those episodes was sharing the information, uh, the scientific information behind it, um, and what works when you're trying to quit. And then part of it was to motivate myself to quit. And I had said in the episode on quitting that I was going to quit smoking just cold turkey and not use any sort of um, assistance in quitting. Well, that didn't work. So we'll remember we talked about NRT, nicotine replacement therapy, versus prescriptions. There's two types of prescriptions. One that sort of blocks the nicotine. Um, from binding to the receptors in your brain and the other one um, that sort of reduces its effect in dopamine release. Um, and both are sort of in the, one is sort of in the realm of antidepressants. Um, and, uh, and then obviously there's, there's cold turkey. So for some reason, I mean, in the past when I've quit smoking and I've gone many, many years without smoking, um, it was easy to quit. And even in this, this past, you know, period of smoking for about two years, there were two occasions where for a month at a time, I just said, I'm done, I'm not smoking and I quit. But this last time, for some reason, it was really, really hard. And I don't know if that's something psychological, or if I had just, you know, become more addicted than in the past, or if my, um, you know, if I'd grown so many billions of new nicotine receptors in my brain that I was, you know, chemically more dependent than I ever have been in the past, but it was not easy. It was really not easy to quit. And I think part of the problem with that is that I wasn't really seeing many negative physical health effects from smoking. I was smoking between, let's call it 10 and 15 cigarettes a day. And I could still run five kilometers at under a five, uh, a five minute per kilometer pace. Um, I was still lifting heavy. Um, I felt good. 
Um, every once in a while, if I smoked a lot, I'd have a cough the next morning and my lungs would feel a little tight. But, you know, the, there weren't drastic negative effects. And maybe that was part of what played into it as well, is that I, you know, mentally didn't or, or physically didn't manifest enough to enough problems to really force me to, to, to say that I need to quit, to hit that sort of threshold of this needs to happen now. But it was much harder than it ever has been in the past. So I ended up turning to uh, NRT, nicotine replacement therapy, and it's worked really, really well. Essentially, I got a, a Nicorette spray bottle. So it was about $45, I want to say, at Shoppers Drug Mart. That's Canadian, if you're not listening in Canada. Um, and it's just a mint. It looks like a breath spray. Um, and uh, every spray is a milligram of nicotine. It's just pure nicotine. So it kind of burns your throat. Um, much like if you've done any nicotine replacement therapy, you will know what I'm talking about. Um, but it's just a mint flavor and it instantly delivers essentially the dose of smoking a cigarette with one squirt. So uh, most cigarettes will deliver between one to two uh, milligrams of nicotine by the time you smoke the whole thing. So with this little, you know, spray bottle, essentially, if you do one spray or two, uh, every time you want to have a cigarette, it basically re removes the cravings because you're getting the nicotine, but you're not actually smoking. And that the idea behind it is that it helps you develop the habit of not lighting up a cigarette and get over that habit before you really get over the nicotine, uh, the nicotine addiction um, as a separate sort of issue. Nicotine in and of itself, other than being highly addictive, um, is not terribly bad for for you. I mean, it releases dopamine and it helps you focus, heightens your awareness. Um, but in general, of course, if you become dependent on it, there's always the risk that you, you know, of course, you're releasing dopamine without doing anything for that dopamine. Um, so in essence, it can make you lazier. Um, so uh, I'm not using that much anymore, but it is, I think this time around, it's the only thing that enabled me to quit totally. Um, smoking. And the big thing for me was that if I had a smoke first thing in the morning when I woke up, then I was definitely going to smoke all day. I needed to get past that first, you know, when I wake up, the first thing I think about having a smoke, I need to get past that for a significant portion of the day. And that's what nicotine replacement therapy, um, this Nicorette spray did for me to get me to that point. Now, it will, it'll be interesting to see long term if I can stay off it. Um, because if you remember back to the episode on the research, the, uh, data behind nicotine replacement therapy is that it's highly effective versus a placebo, um, in the short term, around three months, it had about a 55% increased benefit versus placebo, but at the 12 month mark, it was only about a 25%, um, improvement based on placebo. No, the placebo effect in and of itself can be pretty powerful. So that doesn't mean that nicotine replacement therapy doesn't work in the long run. It's just not as beneficial as compared to a placebo a year afterwards as compared to prescriptions. So either way, um, update on that. If you are a smoker and you are trying to quit smoking, nicotine replacement therapy is a cheap, effective way to get you over the hump of those first couple of days. And if you need to go to your doctor and get a prescription for a Champix or Chantix um, or any sort of bu bupropion um, type drug to get you to that point where you can stop smoking for, you know, days and weeks in a row, um, then absolutely go do it. The most important thing is to stop putting all those chemicals in your body as soon as possible. Whatever you need to do for you, do it. And there's lots of things that work out there. If you want more tips and tricks, obviously go back to that episode. I think it was episode 26 was how to quit smoking the different options available for you, but it's on the YouTube channel. So go check that out. Um, and then lastly, I wanted to update on amino acid power powder versus protein powder. So I've done a couple episodes now on does your protein source matter? Does the type of protein that you're getting, the amount of protein that you're getting, where you're getting it from? And then I did an episode on, you know, why don't we just switch to straight amino acids, right? When we eat protein, we're breaking it down into its consist constituent amino acids and then using those amino acids to build proteins back in our body to help support our growth and performance and, and muscles. Um, and then we went into the digestibility of different protein sources, the um, how they measure the effectiveness 
of different proteins and how we how we use them to build muscle. And I did a whole episode on the different rating scales for different types of proteins. Um, and then I was looking at the different amino acid supplements, amino acid powders that are out there um, to see what would be effective. And so I built out this list. Um, I built out this list uh, of more options to kind of show really what's out there. If you're considering taking, you know, just a protein powder, a plant-based protein, a whey protein, or just going to an amino acid powder, which is what I thought I was going to do. Um, <clears throat> the, uh, these give you some options for what is out there. So um, the first one on the top left here is all max um, essential amino acid powder. And then I have the whole earth and sea protein and green supplement, which is what I've been taking for, for years as my protein supplement. And there's one called Revolution Nutrition. All of these are different price points, but you can get them all on Amazon. And then I just did, did a general whey protein as a baseline. And then I did, um, there's one called uh, from Jack Factory called uh, Surge, uh, EAA Surge. Um, and then ATP Labs Pure Essential Amino Acids. And ATP Lab is another supplement that I, supplement company that I really like. So I wanted to look at theirs as well. I, I um, take their Sinner Zinc formula for zinc supplementation every single day, um, which is again, something that I recommend for a lot of people, especially men, you probably do not get enough zinc. Uh, it's great for a multitude of different bodily functions, but especially men probably need more of it than what you are getting. Just make sure, of course, if you're going to take a zinc supplement that it has some copper in it as well, because the two work hand in hand. And if you just take zinc, your copper will be out of balance. So try and take them together if you can. And I really like the ATP lab formula. So I want to look at them. Now, what I noticed here is that when you're looking at the DIAAS, which is the digestibility index for amino acids, this is the optimal, you know, once you once you are over three years old, this is the optimal ratio of milligrams of the essential amino acids needed per gram of protein. That's the optimal ratio. Okay, so what I did here was I took different amino acids powders, entered their their ratios uh, and, and protein powders, entered their ratios of different essential amino acids, and then looked to see what the bottleneck was. So in the all max essential amino acids powder the bottleneck is phenylalanine and tyrosine and really you're only getting the equivalent of eight times the ratio um, of phenylalanine and tyrosine in that particular powder so that was one that was very cheap it was only about 67 68 cents per serving but it is um its limiting factor is that phenylalanine and you're not really getting the entire um benefits of of a full protein, essentially uh, fully digestible protein that you can use every little bit of it to build muscle back, essentially. And a lot of these have the same bottleneck. So my whole earth and sea protein in greens, which is a pea protein base, its limiting factor is uh, methionine. And of course, it's only got nine times the multiple. So even though it says a single scoop has 21 grams of protein, you're not getting the full benefits of those 21 grams of protein because you're limited by that nine times multiple of your one essential amino acid. Same thing with the revolution powder um, for amino acids. You're limited by your phenylalanine there as well. And then I thought, well, let's just look at a whey because we know whey is a complete protein. We know that whey is also um, cheap and um, it's uh, widely available. You can get it in all different kinds of flavors. So I thought, let's look at the amino acid profile of just whey and see what the limiting factor is there. And the limiting factor, of course, again, is phenylalanine and tyrosine there. And a typical 30 gram scoop of whey protein, it's limiting uh, multiple there is 23. So when you see a scoop of whey protein that says it has 24, 25 grams of protein in it, that's the number that they're talking about is the phenylalanine limiting factor here. So in my estimation, based on what I've read, the research on digestibility of proteins and all their rating scales, whatever your limiting amino acid is, is really the, num the, the grams of protein that you're actually able to use. Um, and interestingly enough, the ATP labs, uh, essential amino acid, the limiting factor again, was phenylalanine, but it was far lower. So really, at the end of the day, whey protein is going to give you the most protein for the, the, the most utilization of protein per gram of 
actual substance that you're taking in. And you can also digest 20 grams of it per hour. And it gives you everything that you need and it is cost effective. So lo and behold, whey protein, go figure, the stuff everyone already has on their shelves and typically takes is the most effective way to get a protein supplementation in your body. So whey protein, definitely a really good option and significantly better than the whole earth and sea protein and greens that I have been taking. However, a whey protein doesn't have a green supplementation in it, nor does it have a bunch of really good mushrooms, nor is it fermented, all that kind of stuff. So there's other reasons that you might want to take a whole earth and sea um, type product with pea protein and a full green supplementation as well. Um, but you can probably get your greens from another powder and get more protein from whey for the same cost uh, if you go that route. Now, interestingly enough, from Jacked Factory, this EAA Surge product is something interesting that I need to look more into. Basically, this has a proprietary blend called Amino 9 in it that is supposed to be the optimally ratioed, um, or the optimal ratio of all nine essential amino acids. And so that you're getting the best digestibility of any amino acid. So when you look at that, the total in a scoop, the total um, weight of the amino acids is 6.7 grams or 6,700 milligrams. If you were to just divide that evenly by the total here, your ratio is 23, which is interesting because that means that for a scoop of this, if they actually follow the optimal ratios for digestibility, which I would hope that they do, um, but I don't know, there, there's not enough information on this proprietary process of getting their amino acids. What it looks like to me is that they've basically taken the amino acid profile of whey protein um, and just used the amino acids from that and none of the extra filler for that would be in a whey protein. So I think, again, I'm not going to say anything conclusive here because I need to do some more research, but this amino acid surge powder from uh, from Jacked Factory might be the next best thing besides whey for getting extra protein. Now, if you're on the road all the time, I think this is something to consider. You've got whey protein. This is just a generic whey, let's say, but it's a really good price um, of whey protein. $27 for whey protein, 25 grams of protein per scoop, but this is a 30, I think it's a 39 gram scoop or something like that. So, um, your cost per gram of protein is about the same here um, as with the EAA surge. However, the big thing with the EAA surge is that the actual scoop size is like a quarter. Is it a quarter? Uh, yeah, it's just between a quarter and a third of the actual scoop size for a whey protein. So if the amino acid surge, EAA surge from Jacked Factory has a limiting amino acid of around 23, call it, we'll guess, from phenylalanine based on where whey is, um, then you're getting the same amount of protein for much less actual weight of product or powder to have to take on the road. So I'm going to look more into this EAA surge and I'm going to get a bottle of it, try it out. It comes in a bunch of different flavors as well, which is kind of cool. Um, same basically cost per gram of protein, but you're getting, you're putting far less powder in your suitcase to travel on the road when you do that. So when in doubt, go with whey, uh, whey is the way, um, but I'm also going to try this EAA surge from Jack factory as well. And their proprietary amino nine blend. And I will report back again, once I've tried this for a few weeks and let you know what my thoughts are on performance. Um, in the gym and overall feelings of uh, recovery and rest and energy levels. So that from that until next time, I hope you're not only surviving, but thriving, even when you're out of your element.